Hi, welcome along to another video. This time, we will look at some recent weather and climate modification news for the period of the 2nd to the 9th of February, 2024. Featuring Malaysia, the UAE, the WEF with Pakistan and India, Morocco, USA, Washington Uni, Montana, Idaho, Indonesia with Tunisia, cybersecurity, make sunsets, space based geoengineering, WEF, SAI, and Nigerian SAI impact. Sources for the data shown are posted in the information section of this video. We'll start with weather modification. Malaysia. Prepped for deployment. Source reliability, 100%. The New Straits Times and the Edge Malaysia reported on 1 February that Chief Minister Chow Kon Yao said he would discuss with the Penang Water Supply Corporation, PBAPP, Chief Executive Officer, K. Parthmanathan, for a cloud seeding exercise to be carried out at the Aeritam Dam area. On 8 February, the Free Malaysia Today news outlet reported that Penang's water company has sought the urgent assistance of the National Water Services Commission, SPAN, for cloud seeding over the Aeritam Dam as its water level continues to drop. Weather modification. The UAE. Ongoing. Source reliability, 100%. On 1 February, the Gulf News reported that the National Center of Meteorology, NCM, is conducting regular cloud seeding missions to maximize rainfall in the country as the clouds are convective. On 7 February, the MSN website published an article titled How Dubai Makes It Rain in the Desert Thanks to Cutting Edge Technology and that it has invested 20 million US dollars in research to help the region get more rainfall. Weather modification Philippines. Prepped for deployment and ongoing. Source reliability, 100%. The Tribune reported on 1 February that the Department of Agriculture had taken mitigation actions due to El Nino that included a joint area assessment before the conduct of cloud seeding operations by concerned DA operating units and national agencies. Weather modification. WEF. Tech request. India for Pakistan. Source reliability, 100%. A World Economic Forum, WEF, article, featured on the print website titled, Fixing Air Can Bring Golden Age, in India-Pakistan Ties. Climate action is good for diplomacy, states on 2 February that, India could also share cloud seeding technology for battling smog. Weather modification. Montana, USA. Preparatory study. Source reliability. 100%. The Missile Current published an article, on 1 February, about climate change being responsible for a drop in snowpack levels. The state administrators released a report, with its drought management plan, containing 36 recommendations, including a study on cloud seeding. Weather modification. Idaho, USA. Ongoing. Source reliability, 100%. Idaho Power have confirmed, via the KTVB news outlet, on 2 February, that snowpack augmentation will continue, via their weather modification activities. Weather modification. Morocco. Prepped for deployment. Source reliability, 100%. The Atalaya news outlet published a report, on 5 February titled, Morocco is considering the seeding of artificial clouds. Between 2021 and 2023, the North African nation, has invested more than 160 million dirhams, which is about 16 million US dollars, in the Ulgaith Artificial Cloud Project. The introductory paragraph states, in light of the current drought, Morocco is considering using cloud seeding technology to produce artificial rain. The country has been trying to increase rainfall through the Ulgaith program, a collaboration with the US Agency for International Development, since the 1980s. It is worth looking at the image used in the article where, if this image was posted on social media, it would be classed as the chemtrail conspiracy theory, or naturally occurring persistent contrails, yet it clearly states the images of aircraft creating artificial clouds by spraying silver iodide and salt. Weather modification. Indonesia assisting Tunisia. Source reliability, 100%. The Indonesian and Tunisian authorities met at the 10th World Water Forum, where the Tunisian minister Balati welcomed the opportunity for cooperation 
between Indonesia and Tunisia. According to him, Indonesia's experience in building dams and developing weather modification techniques can be of help to Tunisia. That was reported by the Indonesian news agency, Antara News, on 7 February. Climate Modification SAISRM Washington University, St. Louis, USA. Source Reliability, 100%. On 1 February, the McKelvey School of Engineering, at Washington University in St. Louis, announced that Rajan Chakrabarti, who leads the Aerosol Interdisciplinary Research Group, and also, Rohan Mishra who designs new materials for energy applications starting from the atomic scale and Lu Xu whose focus is on air quality and climate change, received a 1.5 million US dollar grant from the Simons Foundation to explore stratospheric aerosol injection, SAI. This university announcement has since been removed from its website, as per the 8th of February, it is linked below. There is no saved version of the announcement on the Internet Archive. The foundation has the SRM details listed, but no information is showing on their site anymore either. You can get it via the Internet Archive. The Simons Foundation has assets of approximately just over 5 billion US dollars and is one of the largest private foundations that does charitable work in the USA. Applications were requested in 2023, with the associated statement, the foundation strongly encourages applications, from scientists in the global south and from investigators, who may not have worked in SRM, but have expertise, that could bring new perspectives and skills to this field. With a fuller explanation stating, the Simons Foundation is launching an international collaborative research program designed to fill fundamental scientific knowledge gaps relevant to solar radiation management. SRM is an emerging collection of approaches, including stratospheric aerosol injection, SAI, marine cloud brightening, MCB, and cirrus cloud thinning, CCT, designed to modify the Earth's radiative balance and cool the planet. Although reducing atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations is the only long-term strategy to mitigate climate change and other impacts, SRM might be able to ameliorate some of the negative impacts this century. However, SRM also may pose significant environmental and societal risks, including stratospheric warming, ozone depletion and changes in rainfall. Grants would be issued from February 2024. Their financial record for 2021 shows in-kind contributions, totaled over $10 million. That total was zero for 2020. They received no in-kind donations. In 2021, they received over $10 million in donations, for activities across all their fields of interest. The grant given to researchers at the Washington Uni, for SRM-related objectives, was $1.5 million. Climate modification. Cyber security. Source reliability, 100%. The Homeland Security Today website published an article on 31 January as part of a new column where each month they will delve into the ever-evolving landscape of emerging trends in homeland security and shine a spotlight on. A different component of the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, identifying trends and emerging signals that warrant attention. In their first article, they present five foresight finds, representative of the diverse challenges and opportunities on the horizon. Number two is this. Advancements in geoengineering technologies. Technologies in geoengineering, like solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal, are being explored as solutions to global environmental challenges. They might also lead to new dependencies on digital systems for monitoring and implementation, which could be vulnerable to cyber attacks or malfunctions. This drives the need to assess the potential cybersecurity risks associated with geoengineering technologies, including safeguarding the data integrity of environmental monitoring systems that could be targeted by cyber attacks. Climate modification make sunsets and tribal affairs. Source reliability, 100%. The High Country News, HCN, outlet, is dedicated to providing comprehensive coverage and insights of the Western United States. HCN covers 12 Western states, as well as hundreds of indigenous communities and they aim to publish diverse perspectives on environmental and social issues. The Indigenous Affairs section of HCN published an article on 1 February by Hilary Beaumont, 
which discusses the activities of Make Sunsets, a private company. Their company is backed by venture capital and angel investors. They sell cooling credits that individuals or companies can purchase, like carbon credits. One cooling credit corresponds to the release of at least one gram of sulfur dioxide, which carried out its first SRM experiment in Mexico. The Mexican authorities were not aware the experiment had taken place and due to the unlicensed and unauthorized experiment, the authorities in Mexico banned geoengineering soon after. Make Sunsets relocated their experiments to the USA and in February 2023 they launched SRM balloons containing sulfur dioxide from Nevada, which then traversed the sky across to Northern California. The balloons entered the airspace of at least five tribes. The author of the article, Hillary, contacted one of the tribes, Vice Chair Pam Kubler, who informed Hillary that she had not heard of the activity until Hillary contacted her in April 2023. Hillary writes further about the interview with Pam Kubler, make sunsets, Kubler thinks, is trying to play God. They're taking over the way of the Creator, she said, and they never consulted the tribe. They should have contacted us, and I think they should have contacted every single tribe in that path, she said. Pretty much everyone on the planet knows, you don't do anything involving First Nation lands etc., without receiving their consent first. An interesting comparison to the HCN article, is a report in the local Arizona media, 9 Cajun, Tucson, from the 20th of April, 2023, where it is claimed by the author, Ryan Fish, that cloud seeding potential exists in Arizona. In relation to the Salt River Project and Central Arizona Project, and, it's not happening yet in Arizona, which we know is misspoken, as the Arizona Weather Modification Research Program, existed in 1967 and was active with seeding clouds over Flagstaff. In the Cajun 9 article, it says the Salt River Project is working in partnership with the White Mountain Apache tribe. Climate Modification SAI A fair warning. Source reliability, 100%. An article was published in the Hindustan Times, on 3 February, which contained a clear and fair warning about accepting geoengineering as a norm. The article, titled The Great Defrost, Mridula Ramesh, on the perils of a melting Antarctica, has two paragraphs that stand out. 1. Now here's the twist. Given the severity of the changed climate and the fact that emissions are not falling fast enough, some are proposing what was considered a fringe theory, of cooling the climate by injecting dust, into the stratosphere, to block out some incoming sunlight, a technique called stratospheric aerosol injection or SAI. And 2. There are any number of dangers to this approach, including the possible weakening of the Indian monsoon, and a widening of the Antarctic ozone hole. Indeed, a 2022 report, published by a group, including the World Meteorological Organization, the United Nations Environment Programme and others, suggested that such an injection of dust, could take the ozone hole right back to its largest extent. Talk about unhelpful action. Exactly. Climate Modification Israeli Space Parasol Project Source reliability, 5%. It's not easy to work out if a recent New York Times article is serious or deliberate misdirection coupled with misinformation and disinformation. Published on the 2nd of February and titled, Could a Giant Parasol in Outer Space Help Solve the Climate Crisis? Interest in sun shields, once a fringe idea, has grown. Now, a team of scientists says it could launch a prototype within a few years. I'm pretty sure this is still a very fringe idea, as the detailed failings are easy to spot and borderline comical, based on the resources it would need, to design, build, launch and then function in space. The heavy metals and other resources, such as the amount of rocket launches required, will have a detrimental effect on the planet. The thing they are trying to cure for us, the climate crisis, is being forced onto us, by their own activity, the deployment of a lot of space parasols. If we take a look at some of the details in the article, we find out about a proposed concept test. Scientists led by Yoram Rosen, a physics professor and the director of the Asher Space Research Institute at the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, say they are ready to build a prototype shade to show that the idea will work. You'll see from the next extraction exactly what will be needed in terms of resources to block the necessary amount of solar radiation the shade would have to be about a million square miles, roughly the size of Argentina, 
Dr. Rosen said. A shade that big would weigh at least 2.5 million tons, which is too heavy to launch into space, he said. So, the project would have to involve a series of smaller shades. So, when you stop laughing, we'll continue. Let's unpack those details. Presuming the material can be stretched and maintained as a solid structure, it would need to be swarm connected to the other parasols, covering an area the size of Argentina, which is about a million square miles, which is approximately 1,600,000 square kilometers, would mean that if one parasol, before being swarmed, was as large and stable as to cover a half a kilometer squared, that's 500 meters by 500 meters, so about 12 Olympic swimming pools size, you would need 3,200,000 of them and then also need to maintain alignment to keep the sunshield shape, along with withstanding, structure-bearing loads, during propulsion for alignment. This swarming method is probably based on Earth-based, drone swarming where UAVs use our atmosphere, to bounce its propulsion blades off of, something space does not have and would therefore require, the space parasols to have another source of propulsion, possibly nuclear. It doesn't take much to observe, that if one parasol propulsion system explodes, they all do. Let's now consider the effect of mini-asteroids, space dust and unknown space debris when impacting the material that will be used for shade material, especially when the debris can be acting like a space bullet, which would normally burn up when entering Earth's atmosphere, but just keeps going when faced with a parasol shade material. Presuming it hasn't been ripped to shreds, which would have escalated to catastrophic destruction via rips and holes in the material during realignment activities. The sheer size of the conjoined parasols would mean one simultaneous realignment maneuver would cause the parasol to launch off onto its own trajectory, possibly towards Earth, or another space body where the environmental consequences cannot be cleaned up. Executing a non-uniform realignment would create a flip-flap situation, where individual parasols would collide during the seesawing effect. And then, there is the 2.5 million tons of it that need to be held in place. Fringe, hardly describes it. The NYT article states further that, Dr. Rosen said his team was ready to design a prototype shade, of 100 square feet, which is 30 square meters, a size less than one Olympic pool, and, is seeking between 10 and 20 million dollars, to fund the demonstration. You can work out yourself, what the actual project would cost, if it takes 10 to 20 million dollars, to do a proof of concept test, with a large, umbrella-shaped gazebo, in space which is of course, part of and what is commonly known as, the weather and climate modification industrial complex. There is one sentence in the article, about space-based solar radiation management, through parasol usage that, should raise more concern than its one sentence mention and that is that, a recent study led by the University of Utah, explored scattering dust deep into space. This, based on what we are seeing in our skies, regarding weather and climate modification activities, is the most likely activity that will take place. The NYT article seeds the idea well in amongst all the fairy tales about space parasols. Climate modification. MIT. David Keith. Source reliability, 100%. On the 2nd of February, the MIT Technology Review published two articles featuring David Keith, titled Solar Geoengineering Could Start Soon If It Starts Small. David Keith is the largest promoter of using the tech, as he wants to carry out, his own SRM, SAI projects. Anything he writes or says should be seen as, promotional material containing emotive NLP. Climate modification. WEFSAI source reliability, 100%. The World Economic Forum, WEF, website, highlights saving Greenland with geoengineering. A geoengineering technique called stratospheric aerosol injection could slow the loss of Greenland's ice sheets, research published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Earth Surface Shows. When we know, SAI is an ozone stripping activity. Climate modification. Nigeria. SAI source reliability, 100%. An academic article titled, Impact of Stratospheric Aerosol Injection on Photovoltaic Energy Potential over Nigeria States, this study reveals that the implementation of, the SAI approach for solar radiation management, would have a relatively gainful influence on solar power generation in the Sahel, the Guinea Savannah, the rainforest, 
but a declined effect in the coastal region. Which if you consider, they are claiming solar power, which relies on sunshine, would be increased by blocking out sunshine, tells you everything you need to know about that study and it is the equivalent of saying, wind turbine power can be increased, by shielding the turbines from wind. That was a summary of some recent news. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, thumbs up and all the usual stuff, lay some comments down. You know how it works. Peace wish to you, take care and I'll see you next time.